Today, I wanna to talk about how you can break the codependency spell by doing this. If you're codependent, you're somebody who's identified as somebody who doesn't feel good about themselves. You are in one-way relationships. You tend to rescue people. You tend to enable people. You tend to gain a sense of self and value by how well you're able to take care of other people. In relationships, you always say yes, even though you mean no. And sometimes you are very resentful because you have an inability to say no. When someone asks you to do something, you might feel obligated to say yes. Codependents are notorious for dealing with obligation. And so they're watching their, their sister's dog out of obligation. They're cooking dinner for someone out of obligation. They're in relationships with people who can't take care of themselves out of obligation. They don't confront their spouse about how their spouse's attitudes, opinions, spending habits, or what or addictions are affecting them out of obligation. So there's a lot of guilt, there's a lot of shame, there's a lot of I'm not enough stuff. Codependents struggle with complex PTSD. Sometimes they don't realize it. Sometimes they think, oh, my life was perfect, you know, because I wasn't getting punched in the nose every day, my life was per perfect. Actually, complex PTSD is a lot more serious than that, a lot more complicated than that. If you had parents who seemed, you know, very astute, very intellectual, but you did not feel connected to them. And maybe your parents created a wonderful home, but there was a lot of fighting and a lot of unpredictability in your home that made you feel unsafe. You were growing up, you know, and you were sitting and you were in a soup of dysfunction and you couldn't escape. You know, when you struggle with complex PTSD, you, what it really signifies is that you needed to trust the people in your life and you were powerless to how they behave. And so even though you may have, you may um, identify or may say, yeah, I think I struggle with some codependency, some enabling issues, and I settle for crumbs and I don't feel good enough. And I think I feel this abandonment stuff, but I don't think I came, I don't think I struggle with CPTSD. I urge you to, to investigate CPTSD and I urge you to better understand it so that you can really fully grasp what it means to come from a home that made you feel unsafe, where things were unpredictable. And the consequences of not being able to escape a home in which you were supposed to feel connected and attuned to your caretakers. So that's the first thing that I would suggest that you do. And so on the road to recovery, when we're trying to heal from this codependency thing, what I'd like you to remember that codependency is a dependency. And when you think about codependency as an attachment, so if I'm codependent, I'm attaching to things outside of me. I could be attaching to a prestigious job. And what does it mean? Oh, I have to do that because my parents wanted me to do that. And so now I have this mental and emotional, psychological attachment to doing this thing outside of me, you know, holding this job. I might hate the job. I might disown myself 24 hours a day. I might be driving home on the bus and taking two subways to get home. And I might hate everything about my job, but I'm going. Even though I'm in a dysfunctional relationship with that job and I dislike everybody in that office and my boss is a narcissist and it's a toxic environment, I'm keeping that job because I'm attached to what I think that job means. And maybe also, you know, when we attach to this job outside of us, we think we know what other people think about us. You see, so if I'm, let's say I'm an actress, right? And I have, you know, I'm making $20 million a year as a film, right? I think that you think that's awesome. And because I think you think that's awesome, I keep this job. I might hate being an actress. I might want to own a farm with a couple of pigs and some chickens, but I will not give up that job because I am codependent upon what I think that job means. So I don't have a true sense of self. I don't have a true identity. I need something outside of me to define my identity. If I'm in a toxic relationship, doesn't matter. I need a relationship to make me feel worthy. I need a relationship as a backdrop to work out all my childhood stuff on. And so, yeah, I might attract someone who's a lot like my dad, who has high narcissistic traits. 
and below the veil of consciousness is repetition compulsion. I am recreating my childhood experiences with this person. I need to. It's my way. I'm, it's my way of trying to heal what has been unhealed. A better way to say it is, I'm trying to experience that which was unexperienced that has not not yet been brought to the conscious mind in order for me to heal it. So codependency means that I'm attached to something outside of me. Most people identify codependency as being in a dysfunctional relationship and being attached to the relationship and being unable to snip myself from the relationship. And I think that's a fair, fair analysis of what codependency is. But codependency is really rooted in one-way one way relationships and inability to take care of myself in a healthy way. I put other people's needs before my own needs. I don't know what my needs are. I grew up anticipating the needs of other people for the sake of feeling safe, right? And so I might, if I'm codependent, I might attach myself to someone thinking they'll save me. You know, I'll take care of them, but they'll figure out all the finances of the home, you know, and I will never have to make a decision because this person, I'm going to take care of them, but this person is going to tell us what we're going to do on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, and I'm just going to cater to the needs of this person. So that's also a very common thing you know, if you're struggling with codependency. But codependency is basically an identity issue that becomes a behavioral issue that manifests in a relationship issue. And so when we are wanting to break anything, right, and we want to overcome something, it's really important that we understand what it is that we are wishing to change. So if you don't understand that codependency is about attachments, or codependency is about, hmm, I'm using something outside of me to help me create a self-identity. I recently coached somebody who was in a narcissistic relationship and my client said that I didn't realize, this person, he didn't realize that his sense of self was coming to catering to this woman who had high narcissistic traits. He didn't realize that when he took care of her and he solved all her problems, when he paid all her bills, you know, when he took care of her, when she had a meltdown, when, you know, he thought she was lying and he didn't confront her, he was thinking that he was a good person. That's where he was getting his sense of self from. Well, I'm a good person because I take care of this person. I'm a good person. I must have value because I'm catering to this person. And in this dynamic, he's not recognizing how he's being exploited by someone who had their own agenda. And so it's important that if you recognize that you are identifying as somebody who's struggling with codependency, think about what you attach to. Think about where are you getting your sense of self from? Do you feel good about yourself because you are the PTA mom that everyone can go to? Like that's a great quality, but if your identity comes from that and you are good only because you do that in your head, what happens if you can't do that anymore? Well, what happens if you just don't want to one day? Where does your sense of self come from? You know, if you are somebody in your neighborhood who is always out there taking care of everybody else, there's a snowstorm and you arrange for everyone to get their meals, again, that's a beautiful thing. As long as you're not attaching your sense of self, me, I matter and I'm worthy because, you know, you're putting a condition on your worth. You gotta really, really be careful of that. You know, if there, I can't tell you how many people I've coached who have been married to alcoholics, who in their head thought, well, I'm a good person because I'm staying. You know, I'm a good person because I'm not confronting them. You really have to think about that because your sense of self and your sense of worth is coming from disowning your own self, which is common. It is, it, 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 it's like a, a ribbon that runs through every codependent person. I am good if. I am good when. And so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're chasing this carrot of enoughness, and that's just not fair to us. It's not fair to someone to live their life that way, and I really hope that you are recognizing that in yourself. Now, if you want to break the codependency spell, what you have to do is you have to recognize that you're attached. You have to recognize what you, where you're getting your sense of self from and your identity. That's the first thing. But the simplest thing that you can do, at least I think so, and it definitely helped me on the road to recovery, is recognize when you're seeking a sense of validation and acceptance from other people. And let me tell you something. If you're doing this work honestly, it will blow 
your mind. I remember when I began to observe my mind, like Eckhart Tolle teaches, like become the observer of your thoughts, right? Like not so easy because we think we are our thoughts because there's no separation between our conscious mind and our higher self. In order for me to observe, let's say these are my thoughts, in order for me to observe my thoughts, I have to have some separation. There's got to be a gap in which I can imagine that the real me is my higher self and my higher self is observing my thoughts. That takes a lot of mindfulness training and spiritual practice. Meditation is a great way to get it. Now, when you're looking to break the codependency spell, you have to develop the ability to observe your feelings. You have to the ability, you have to develop the ability to observe your thought process. So one of the things that I ask my clients to do, for instance, if they're getting ready for a date, I ask them, observe your thoughts. Do your thoughts sound something like, I hope he likes my dress. I hope that I don't turn him off with whatever I order for food. I hope that he likes my house and my house is good enough for him. I hope that, you know, my nails aren't really long. I hope he doesn't, I hope he doesn't mind that I don't have long nails or I recently got my hair cut. I hope he likes my haircut. If your thoughts are all about this other person, you know, I hope that they like this and I hope that they like that. I wonder what they think. I wonder what they're doing. Oh my God, where are you? <laughs> like, where are you? Do what? Where are you? You know, because if you're constantly worrying about what the other person thinks, then you're not checking in with self. You're not asking yourself, well, what do I think? What do I feel? What do I want? If you're in the mode of seeking validation and trying to be good enough, you are in the mode of attachment. You are in the mode of codependency. And if you're not very careful, if you're not observing your thoughts, you're not setting boundaries, and you don't understand what narcissistic traits are, then you are walking right into the mouth of a very dangerous situation. That's why it's really, really important that you recognize yourself. You have to look at yourself. Nothing changes until you change. My world did not change until I recognized that I was codependent, that I was in a toxic relationship, and then I brought my own toxicity from childhood into this dynamic. It wasn't all my ex-husband's fault. Granted, he had personality issues, as did I. We both did. But I recognized that for sure, I brought my own stuff into that dynamic and it was quantified and it was 13 years, 12 or 13 years was enough for me. Thank you very much. And it was very painful to recognize what I had done. And it took me a few years to get it undone and a number of years to get finally figure out that what was wrong was me. My relationship wasn't codependent. I was codependent, which meant I had to change. Nothing changes until we change. And so breaking the codependency spell is going to take everything you've got. And if I wanted to tie it up in a bow and give people my best advice, it would be to stop seeking validation. Check yourself. You have to pay attention to when you are begging for approval, when you are lying, when you say yes, when you mean no, when you are over explaining, when you try to tell someone no, and then you give them a three paragraph answer as to why you said no. Someone asks you a question and you respond, no, that's no is a complete sentence. And I know it's really difficult to just say no, I get it. You know, and some people have said to me, oh, Lisa, come on, do people like to know why you said no. I go, yeah, people like to know why I said no, as long as you realize that it's not necessary. You don't have to, you know, tap dance when someone asks you something. You don't have to over explain yourself. People who put you in a position to make you feel like you owe them an explanation, in my humble opinion, you got to be careful about that because I believe that could be a sign of covert manipulation. Um, people shouldn't put you in a position where you need to explain yourself. Oh, you're a grown person, right? They are a grown person. I finally realized that if someone asks me a question, then there's a 50% chance that the answer is going to be no. And that's really for other people to, to accept. I think lots of times in our unconsciousness, when we ask someone to do something for us, we just kind of assume they're going to say yes. You know, which it, it takes a certain level of maturity to ask with integrity, can you watch my dog 
and or are you willing to watch my dog and we have to accept that this person has a right to say no and there's a 50 percent chance that they might say no and we don't turn around and give them the silent treatment and brood and go kick kick a rock down the block because we're so upset or we curse at them because we're so upset we just accept that this person said no and they have a right to say no and so if you really want to break the code in this pendency spell make sure you're doing everything you can to honor yourself and to stop seeking validation you must start seeking your own validation and you must start telling the truth. Now, for another video, we'll talk about what happens when you start saying no, what happens when you stop seeking validation, because when you stop seeking validation, a lot of people get ticked off. Just remember that at your core, you are enough. You were born to make yourself feel enough and to manifest people who know you're enough, that you know are enough so that you can go right off into the sunset and quantify the most amazing, abundant, and beautiful energy ever. My name is Lisa Ramon, the Breakthrough Life Coach and best-selling author of six books. And my seventh book, The Codependency Manifesto, is due out soon. If you want to listen to one of my books for free, click one of the links in the description box below. I'm also the creator of the 12-week break Breakthrough Coaching Program. And this is an online coaching program for adult children who've grown up in alcoholic homes or narcissistic homes. If you're somebody who is just struggling with codependency and you don't know how to honor yourself, you don't know how to set boundaries, you don't know how to honor what you feel, you don't know how to process your emotions. You know, if you're somebody who's really looking to figure this out and understand what's going on, the 12 Week Breakthrough Coaching Program is for you. I moderate this class myself twice a year along with the team. I have a fall session and a summer session. Every Saturday, we have a live group call and I answer your questions live. Follow along from anywhere in the world. And if you want to jump into programs right now, like codependency programs, programs on narcissism, if you want a ton of journaling prompts and everyday challenges, and every month I release new resources with a podcast and journaling prompts with a new mantra, and I also host a live call on Facebook. If you want to jump into that, you can click the link below and actually get inside my membership site for 50% off. Thank you for being here and thank you for being a part of this amazing YouTube community. Namaste. Until next time. Bye. If you love everybody. this content, check out the next video and don't forget to click the link below so you can take the codependency quiz. If the narcissist is emitting a sense of abandonment and you struggle with abandonment because of your wound, you will want to take care of the narcissist whose wound is abandonment.